I watched uh, that that Graham Hancock guy, the the guy I like from Joe Rogan, um, the one who theorizes about the last I, Ice Age. Um, is he the Gagepli Techie or something? Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, he's got they gave him a Netflix show, Look at that, and I haven't listened to any of those. Dude, the Joe Rogan, <laughs> the Joe Rogan power is strong. Like, like it got that guy a Netflix show. He's got a big deal Netflix uh, series. Um, it's like I don't know four, five, six e- um, episodes. There's a lot of archaeologists already just shitting on it and be like, "This is blasphemy." I mean, it's <laughs> so funny because right off the bat in his in his show, he, he, in his show on Netflix, he's like talking about how archaeology tries to shut him down left and right. Talking about how like they don't want like mainstream archaeology hates us at every step. They try to befoul us <laughs> or whatever nonsense he says. And uh, he's, he's intersplicing these clips of the Joe Rogan experience and him talking to Joe Rogan, like in the episode of this show. But it's pretty good. I only watched the first episode. They went to, um, I don't know, some dirty uh, jungle. And there was this uh, this like step pyramid thing made out of these sort of hexagonal uh, rocks Ooh. that are volcanic in nature, but they must have hauled them 500 miles or something. Um, seemed like a bunch of horse shit to me, but I was thinking that maybe the future episodes might have some more likely uh, um, ancient That seems fun. And you know what? Like, in the field of archaeology, like, if some guy was like, yeah, I'm a mathematician and everybody's doing it wrong, I'd be like, <laughs> obviously you're a goof because all these other people have their their maths. In a field like archaeology... I'm I'm willing to believe this. Like this guy's at least right on a thing or two. Like they're archaeologists get real. There's so much shit you haven't found. You don't know the right timing. There was a story that came out a couple weeks ago where like a formerly like debunked Roman emperor who was a total myth. They found coins with his face on it, and they were like, "Okay, he was real." Like, <laughs> okay, this guy was a real Roman emperor. We just found coins with his face on it. Like it was previously thought to be a myth. Now, like to think we know like anything like every everything i guess i would say like that's crazy of course there's stuff we don't know there's probably I really whole, like the idea of maybe. those of those civilizations that predate like uh, that is cool you know the ice age they, they go back to like I, I like the idea of i don't know people living in giant pyramids with uh infrastructure and technology with like mammoths pulling their sleds and like worrying about saber-toothed tigers and shit like like, like I, I i like that world that's a cool yeah. world there was a I've mentioned it before, but there's an awful movie, 10,000 BC, and that's the whole premise. It's like Apocalypto, but time but shifted bad. to 10,000 BC. Yeah. If you want to watch a great movie, though, of, that Mel Gibson's Apocalypto is always, always the, just the tip of my tongue when I'm recommending things to people. Hmm. It's a good movie. I haven't seen Apocalypto. Like, I think I saw it in theaters, and then that was the most recent time I've seen it, maybe. I remember liking it, thinking it was really cool. Yeah, it's so. fun. It's really violent. Isn't it like, it's uh, about like the Mayans, the Incas. I get the Mayans and the Aztecs, Aztecs mixed up, but yeah, it's about those uh, South American brown people and uh, and how like yeah, the, the narrative is that these guys are in like a small tribe and they're getting kidnapped and their village is getting ransacked by the people who live in like the big city where they mm. you know sacrifice people to the gods and have those giant pyramids and everything. And so they have to go out in the jungle to the little tribes and grab people for those sacrifices. And you see, not through language, because I don't, there's no English. It's all in some ancient dialect, but I don't think there's subtitles. But you kind of just visually learn through the visual storytelling, because Mel Gibbs is an amazing director, that this is a failing culture. There is famine, there's disease. And the reason that they're out here hauling all these people up to be sacrificed is to try to stop it. They're trying to stop the the rot that, that's consuming them from the within. And then you see it at the end that <clears throat> the... I'll call him the wizard, but you know the the, the head priest, the uh, the astronomer, um, probably a slash astrologer, is has been able to predict that the there's going to be an eclipse, and he's like given the king the nod so that he can like pretend like he's the one making the sun disappear, and you can mm-hmm. just imagine the power that that would create for your your leader if you showed up because the boss said he was going to block the sun from the sky today, and you're like bullshit, we'll show up, do it, and he went oh and the sun disappeared oh yeah you, i mean i'm you gotta boss, do what that guy says you gotta do what that hmm. guy says like if, if you can like jesus what could he do to me yeah don't say don't say anything about jesus he hates that he hates <laughs> that he does not care for it one bit 
yeah the the aztecs like the uh, like obviously it's like up in the air but like the amount of people they purportedly sacrificed is like insane like thousands of people a year are some of like the lower estimates like Really? So ma- they said sa- human sacrifice. They were like, it was just another Wednesday. Dang, Buster. Like they killed another Wednesday. <laughs> they just sacrificed <laughs> so many people in their, I guess, to their gods or whatever. I don't, I don't know anything about like the Aztec religion. Like, well, maybe mythology. that's why things went so well for them, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Mm, well, uh, what Graham Hancock didn't, always but you may, but you may not know this, Woody. It didn't work out. <laughs> like, you, know, it, you may not know this. I think if I think Spain pushed their shit in. Like I uh-huh. think <laughs> I think Spain showed up and was like, "Oh, like you guys are in dark age." Oh my god, that like you know, like we've had gunpowder for like a real long time. Like Aztecs are like, man, we, we should have killed all the inventors. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we shouldn't have killed that guy who came up with that really mysterious shining bulb. Like <laughs> oh, no. he, he could have helped. Yeah, like that. That was like a poor guy in history. The 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 Aztec Ben Franklin. It's like <laughs> guys, well, great news. <laughs> then it just cuts to his head bouncing down stone steps. <laughs> What's well, interesting, like 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 the Romans had little steam powered toys, but they had no concept to industrialize steam power. You know what I mean? Like, like, and then there's been a lot of discussion. There's a whole YouTube channels that go on about it for hours about could the Romans have been on the verge of an industrial revolution a thousand years before the real one? You That's know, could, totally realistic. Like, like, yeah. Well, they break down a lot of reasons why the empire would, wouldn't have been able to support such a thing. Something uh, about raw materials. No, but like if they had and, stayed, if they hadn't been like invaded by Germanic tribes and and all of. Well, that I mean, eventually, yeah, but but they, you know, they already. Like what was to stop them from doing it then and there was the sort of the the question if they if they already understand steam power and the power of steam to because they had they they have these toys and basically like you put water under it and this little thing like walks around and spins and shit and it's Mm -hmm. like if you can do that you make a steam drill to mine with and like any number of like locomotive type inventions yeah you know thousands of years or eight thousand years before. Am I we did? messing up my empires? But didn't the Romans like go into Europe and maybe have the resources they'd need? Uh, it was less about like access to the resources and more about the way their economy was set up. I think, and uh, the, the like the the way things, the way that an entrepreneur would not be um, rewarded for you know coming up with a new thing mm. that didn't fit the mold of the empire. Uh, you know, it, it's like oh, you got a new way of make yeah look everyone does it this way they'd have been slow to change and or it would have been a difficult change i can't remember exactly how he made sense of it but it was it took him an hour and a half and he called himself an historian so i believed him oh trust <laughs> me hour and a half that's a lot of time that's it what was a lot of time a lot of ad sounds like a motherfucker who can't explain how to rob a jewelry store yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're like larry tell us about the jewelry store he's like let me say let me tell you something about the incas <laughs> the human sacrifice that was going on there makes my crimes look mild again. It's like what are you what talking Jesus. about like, <laughs> so succinct to the point and full of rich detail though when you talk about like ancient oh, yeah. Mesopotamia <laughs> and their farming and agricultural techniques He's just it just a the silk boys the silk <laughs> from the nile river delta you gotta understand you've got 20 million square <laughs> hectares being condensed there when it all dries up, it's the richest farmland on this planet. The fertile like, like crescent, breaks, they call it. The fertile crescent. <laughs> yeah. Between Dude, the Tigris and the Euphrates, the birthplace you've got of civilization. Me, my, Taylor, I crossed the Mississippi River today. That shit oh. is like dried up. There's a huge beach. It's like 30 feet lower than it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. We've had like a couple days of like sprinkly, gloomy shit, but we have not had big rain in a while, which is unusual around here usually we get more even though we're do you need rain or does it rain in like minnesota or something and that's where it comes from don't the mountains like melt and feed it like i don't think rain is the problem well the mississippi is isn't coming from mountains i don't think like at least in the u.s you know it's that's that's a fun it's actually a mystery doesn't it comes <laughs> like, like is, there a, is there a water i don't know if i should believe Taylor no it's actually right it's actually unknown yeah the hole in the sky right below canada they they kept water. trying to follow it back to the source but they get distracted they get lost, <laughs> they get lost. um all right Just well let me boring. guess yeah, where the mississippi comes from and i'm gonna say it's the great lakes um i bet that has something to do with it 
Yeah, I would guess. So we got to we got to figure out where did the Great Lakes go? Maybe we can solve this. <laughs> when's the last time you saw? When's the last time either of you saw one of the Great Lakes? I've it's never been a minute confirmed for me. It. Actually, that's not true. I've been to Detroit, Chicago, to, Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's been, the I've coldest. That's one of the cold like things i've ever felt was like the wind hey, blowing up that fucking lake in chicago lake i Itasca, think i was right like... it does seem to originate in minneapolis minnesota yeah so I maybe was... once they get more it... snow and it melts is it like a dwarf woman going. does it just spring out of the ground or like, like where's the ground? no it it really though like i followed it up on google maps to oh, God damn it. minneapolis <laughs> And it goes to the St. Croix Falls and kind of just starts there, I guess. Well, don't, I don't just know. use a map. Ask somebody. On no, the it says that Lake Itasca. <laughs> no, you're right, Kyle. It's from a, or you're both right. It's from a glacial lake in Minnesota called Lake Itasca. Oh. And well, it's we need to pump some water in Lake Itasca. You know what? I bet it is anywhere. It's near fine. Flint, it's such Michigan? an ugly river. Mississippi's fine. Just like, pump some water into the. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, we need to get this water open. If you're low on water, just pump water from the place. Yeah, just just like, push. <laughs> I never heard those people in Flint, Michigan, say that they don't have water. All I hear them say is they don't like the water they have. So I say, if you don't like it, ingrates. I hear some. There's some people in Lake Wanaconka who could use a little water, and maybe we'll yeah. take some of that Flint, Michigan water. And look, the way nature you know works, who else? It'll yeah, really like it'll water. filter the Nazis. It'll filter that dirty water out. <laughs> it'll clean that water by the time it gets to Mississippi. It'll be clean. It, all that flint filth will have washed out of it probably yeah, sooner than yeah. that it could could be true i mean the the mississippi river is disgusting like titicaca that's not a real wait, place if it melts from glaciers we could just put more glaciers there yeah but oh. i think that's a, a t big to do easy enough eh. ice machine dude have you seen we like, could steal a glacier from canada they couldn't stop us <laughs> oh can you just why don't they hook up to icebergs ever and like haul them in like rich guy style and have a good time with them? I would, if I was like a billionaire, I'd do shitty stuff like that. Like, like, Oh, you don't, <laughs> you, you think my private jet's bad for the environment. I'm, I'm going to hook up to the biggest iceberg I can fucking find, fly it to drag it across the planet to Tahiti. And we're going to chip, the fucking thing off in our drinks while we while we like, sit on the beach. You know but, what I would do if I was like a big old billionaire? I'd be like, all right, I'll, I'm prepared to put billions towards environmental safety, cleaning lakes, getting plastic and shit out of the oceans. But we're gonna meet out my money, and it's gonna depend on cumulative U.S. BMI levels. If I'm doing my part <laughs> to to help eliminate this consumption problem. We all have to reduce consumption. So as soon as average BMI gets down to 30, boom, we're saving penguins. Also, I'm playing hardball. Every day it doesn't get below 30. I'm fucking killing some, some penguins. <laughs> also, let people know penguins that you're, you're playing for real. Yeah. Peng well, I mean, I'm just, I, I picked a, a likable animal. Like, no one would can be upset if it's babies? like, I'm going to, you, you can, well, you'd have to take their baby's house, but you can control them with an iron fist. I like the, that. Yeah, you know, they get good. real upset when you, I've seen like people would get upset, like, but think of how many lives I would be saying I'd no, be the, the biggest lifesaver on earth. No, I've and I would like be the only one exempt from the BMI thing. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you get bigger. I don't bigger. think any of us. <laughs> bigger <and> bigger. <laughs> I don't think that calculator works for any of us. I, I, they, I, I no, I've seen where like a shitty penguin will like fuck up and like break their egg or kill their baby or something, and they'll run and kidnap somebody else's baby, but then they'll fucking get bored of it and they'll abandon it. <laughs> And the and the yeah. original parent is can't find them now because you know it's not like they left them at at the at the Seven Eleven. They all look penguins. the same. 